Hi, today I want to make some low brass mutes for you. This is a project I'm a music teacher and began as a way to help my students during the pandemic who couldn't practice because of disturbing family members, siblings learning and, and parents sleeping, etc. And so um, this is just a something for trombone. I've got a trombone euphonium and a baritone mute that I'm going to show you today. So here's the trombone mute. <laughs> Without the mute comparison. So um, obviously it takes a lot of sound off. They blow really surprisingly well for something that's made out of this is cardstock, or um, I've also made actually that one's made out of back half of a lumbar support that I, I got from my chair. Um, it's just the cardboard there or using a you could use a um, an old an old band folder would work. Great um, file folders. Uh, I'm using cardstock, and I've got one for euphonium. And one for baritone. We use these little baritones in our district for um, fifth and sixth graders, just a lot easier to handle and, I mean, cost-wise, price point's a little bit lower on them as well. But it's the same exact mute as the baritone, euphonium mute, baritone mute is, just a little bit smaller, obviously, because of the smaller bell. Anyway, so let's get started. I'll show you how to do this. And my name's Jeff Jacox. I teach music here in Central California. And um, again, these are just a project I began for my students and wanted to share with the rest of the world. So trombone, baritone, and euphonium. The difference between the baritone and the euphonium mute is just obviously the size of them. Hard to hang on to. Um, the baritone mute just began with a single piece of cardstock. And I like, I've done a little bit of experimenting the finer the point on the mute, the uh, better it seems to blow, the clearer it is. And it doesn't seem to affect the amount of volume. It just, just blows better. So um, starting with a fairly tight point on there. And that could, you see if I would cut that off, that could become this mute here. Um, for the euphonium, um, this isn't large enough to go into the bell. It drops down the side and you're going to lose it. So I started, added a second, a second slice of paper here. So... It's like a piece of paper, I guess it's not really a slice. And we're gonna just drop that down inside to make the cone larger. And I'm gonna put a little little tape on it here. Just taping that second piece onto the first piece and to increase the diameter at the bottom of the mute. Um, I started using just the same cardstock on the bottoms of the mutes, but I found that um, a little bit of just corrugated or something with a little bit more rigidity is, um, is a little bit better at the, um, at the bottom, gives me more stability of the mute. So I'm gonna just begin, I think we've got enough depth here, take the highest point of that and we're gonna start cutting around and um, just level that off. You saw how I was rolling that up and again, this isn't rocket science. I'm just trying to again match the size of the mute to the instrument that it's designed for. And try to come up with a fairly flat base on these things. So I'm go around. Let's see if I can make that meet up over here a little bit better. more off right here. There we go. That's about the same. Actually, just a little bit larger, I think, which might work just a little bit better. Let's see if my, this uh, came off my, my lunch box today. I was eating well. Um, just again, a little bit more rigid than the cardstock. I'm going to take a pencil. So this is the cone. I'm going to stick a bottom on it now. 
And so I'm going to just set that there, let it sit fairly flat. I'm going to push it down a little bit and just begin going around and trying to make a circle that's going to fit just barely inside of the of the cone. And I'm, I've made a lot of these, actually, for all the brass instruments, trumpet, horn, trombone, baritone. I haven't done one for tuba yet. That's my next adventure. I'm going to probably need a larger larger stock. I'm still working on that. Maybe that band folder I just had in my hand is going to become a, a tuba mute tomorrow. But um, all of them come out just a little different. And I think the... Um, the point of the cone is the only thing that I found that really seems to, to affect the the way that they blow. Um, I had some that had more of a more cut off and a larger center at the bottom there, and and it um, at the tip of the mute. I'm sorry, and those didn't seem to work nearly as well. They were stuffier and didn't blow well. The thing I like about these is they really seem to to blow pretty nicely. And take just a little bit more off right here. And I think that the circle more or less going to fit there. So just start with some tape and we're going to tape onto the bottom. You get two on either side. That's going to get me started. And I'm going to put the printing in for now. And I just want to line that first piece of tape up with the edge of the edge of the cone. And then come around and I can do the same thing here. And again, by just pushing and pulling a little bit to get those to line up. You've seen the other videos I did, the trumpet and the French horn, much the same process here. And um, just gonna pull on that a little bit and pull on this side a little bit. And it's gonna need to be, I'm gonna need a little bit more tape than this, but you can see the process. And just for time on the video, I'm going to um, jump ahead and I've got a little bit of a bubble here in it, but I think that's going to be okay. I've noticed that just a little air escaping here and there actually helps them blow a little bit more freely and still um, still works with the, and as I'm taping, I'm getting a little bit extra. So I'm going to cut that off. Um, and they just blow with a little bit of space around that seem to blow more freely. Kids that are doing this with smart music have found that they have to um, tune a little bit. Um, Got to push in probably inch, inch and a half on a baritone to get all the way back up to your normal concert pitch. But um, other than that, they can play play really quite well. So there's our cone, and I'm going to stick. Um, as you notice, in every mute, there's a. Um, always the corks that hold it in the bell. In this case, not so much worried about holding it in the bell as much as we are um, just allowing, if I drop this in the bell right now, it's going to be very stuffy because it um, is plugging the, plugging the bell of the instrument. So a little bit of these tape, well, these spacers, what are they? Um, let me just go that, that route for you real quick. I'm going to take a piece of just one inch cardstock here and just rip through there. And I fold those up to make these spacers. Um, I just fold it in half before I start rolling because that just saves me some time. And I fold them as tight as I can at the beginning and start as folds. And by the time I get out a little bit further, they kind of turn into rolls. And the idea is that it's about the diameter of a pencil when I get done and just about one inch long. And again, I don't get too worried about how thick exactly these are just letting a little bit of sand out a little a little bit of sound out I'm sorry around the bell of the instrument so um, for this for this mute I put and I'm using the blue tape um, I said in an earlier video because it allows me to reposition the corks that's the one thing that seems to be fairly fairly critical if you don't like the way the mute blows um, reposition your spacers and see if that if that helps out so here I am I'm going to try to be about, I think I'm going to try to do four here. So come around to the opposite side. Pretty evenly distributed. 
and I'll put a couple more on and we'll give it a try. taking a piece of tape. I'm sticking the spacer in the middle of the tape and I'm going to try it right about here. It's about the distance from the tip that the other one was. Turned out just a little bit longer than the other one. I think that's going to be just fine. Might be just a little easier to play. So let's see. Grab them off piece and see what we have here. Sounds and feels pretty good. It, it's a little little funky to um for the sound. I think if I repositioned, maybe let it drop in just a little bit further into the bell would give me a better sound as compared to the other one I did. Lose it here. There we go. Actually, it feels like maybe if I would put the corks just slightly lower and a little bit more space around, there would sound a little less tubby. But that's the process. So, um, again, I've made them for trumpet, for horn, for trombone, and uh, baritone and euphonium. The more conical bore instruments seem to have more of a, a wider taper at the bottom and the cylindrical bore instruments, you know, a little smaller um, tighter cone at the bottom. So anyway, hope you enjoyed and I hope that's something that's helpful to you and let me know um, what you think if you make one. Thank you.